How did you get into the film industry to begin with from personal training, from growing your businesses there? How did you get into the film industry and then end up being in this huge film? So I always wanted to be in the film industry. Um, and, um, you know, uh, I tried many different methods like getting an acting coach, uh, talking to people. And then uh, whilst I was a coach, one of the one of the sayings that I've learned to live with is success leaves clues. And that means you've got to find people or role models that you look up to who are doing something extraordinary in film. And my role model in 2010 was Keanu Reeves. So I took a goal and I put Keanu Reeves up there. And uh, by chance, he was coming to Beijing and they asked me to look after him um, as, as a bodyguard. And I was still doing personal training. And all I said was, yes. <laughs> Yes. And at that time, uh, Keanu had just finished doing um, the Matrix movies and uh, John Wick was just a concept. And so, you know, just spending time around him, I realized this is what I want to do. Um, but it's not that simple. So I had to get proper training, which meant uh, hiring several acting coaches, going to Los Angeles, which meant flying from Beijing to Los Angeles. I would take up the money I saved from personal training and just invested into coaches. And it wasn't for the first, I would say, four or five years that I got any roles. I was doing TV shows, but I wasn't getting any films. Um, and then I, I made some audition tapes in Australia. And after I made the audition tapes, I put them out in China. And then one day I got a casting call for a film called SWAT. And I went and auditioned. And the guy's like, man, you look like some actors I've seen in America. Can you speak Chinese? And I said, yeah, I can speak Chinese. So we started speaking Chinese. I did an audition and he went, done, you're, you're, you're in the film. And I went, oh my goodness. So I was working, um, I was actually traveling uh, between Beijing and Los Angeles and training at a studio called 8711. 8711, they do all of uh, the John Wick, a lot of the Marvel movies. So I was just learning how to be an action performer. Um, and then, you know, with that knowledge and having a great coach, um, uh, that would be like Larry Moss. Larry Moss is a phenomenal coach. He wrote a book called uh, The Intent to Live, uh, Achieving Your True Potential as an Actor. So I took all the lessons I learned from there and just put it into this role. I think I had about a minute on screen time. And then from that, the momentum carried on until uh, fast forward a few years later, we have uh, Wandering Earth 2, which is China's biggest, uh, biggest ever sci-fi. And uh, yeah. I was up against Wu Jing, a lead actor. Yeah, that's so it's a process. Incredible. You mean, yeah. Um, in terms of like, you know, how do you get into it? I always tell people you've got to, you've got to have a dream, okay. And when you have a dream, don't live in a dream world. So what does that mean? It's like, okay, I have a dream. The dream world is like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No, no, no. Break it down into you know goals. A goal would be, okay, what am I going to achieve in six months? Who am I going to train with? How much are going to spend? And just from that process, a step by step process, I got closer to the dream. So, um, and that meant also finding a role model like Keanu Reeves because success leaves clues. They did a lot of things um, that led them to the point they are. And I believe he's an extraordinary actor and a human being because uh, he's a definition of getting in the game and staying in the game because he's been doing it more than 30 years. And a lot of actors I saw that were out after five, 10 years, and that's not really me. And especially as a personal trainer, um, you can't get a good body overnight. But you can take a series of steps to push you in that direct direction. Um, so when the time comes, you're ready. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, Keanu Reeves is definitely it, probably the biggest blockbuster star as well, because he doesn't have to do a movie a year. He doesn't have to keep being in your face and advertising himself. He just pops up in really high quality blockbuster films and remains the biggest blockbuster yeah. star. 100%. You know, for me, um, you know, because I'm, I'm very heart driven. What does that mean? It means I, I do what I love. I follow my heart, but I use my head. I don't live in a dream world, but work towards the dream with steps. And that also means finding people that are very humble, that are very hardworking. And it's not all about them, but it's about the team and taking care of the production crew. Because um, as I learned with all the films I've been on, particularly Wondering Earth 2, that was 20,000 extras. When you have that many people, it's not one person. It's everyone, you know. Um, what I learned there is that it takes all of us to help each one of us. It takes all of us to help each one of us. And to me, Keanu Reeves is the best example of that. The best example. 
And because I like philosophy in China, I try to allow the philosophy that I study to guide the decisions I make in acting. And one of them is to uh, be like nature. So if you're like nature, you're rich. But if you follow people's judgments and opinions, you're poor. And to me, Keanu is the definition of, I would say, the sun and the ocean. The sun, because it's always given light, you never expect anything in return. And they say with a love like that, you light up the whole world, which I say he does in his films. And the ocean is the most powerful force in the world because it remains low. And I believe Keanu is both of those. So as a role model for myself, um, he's really left so many clues of how to succeed humbly and to give back to others so you, you're 100% right and if you've seen the John Wick movies I mean it is it is you know the film I did with Wu Jing and Wandering Earth 2 that's an action movie but Keanu's like right up there they're just doing just so many amazing things and to transition out from the Matrix style to John Wick and to make a franchise you know what I mean you don't see many people doing that on top of all the Marvel stuff coming out you know DC it's it's a whole different genre yeah, it's insane what he does. And and you touched on it there with The Watering Earth too. Um, how was it filming that? And what do you think was the leading contributing factor to why that film did so well internationally? Um, well, I think there's, it's, there's so many factors. One is it was a great team, incredible director, incredible actors, everyone believing in the project. So the vision was very clear to create something extraordinary. So everyone came to set to say, uh, you know, um, I'm going to do something extraordinary together with everyone, right? Based on what I said earlier, which is it takes all of us to help each one of us. So it's not about you. It's about the whole collective coming together. And also uh, Stanislavski said this, which is one of my favorite quotes, which everyone I felt when we were filming The Wandering Earth 2 lived up to, which is there are no small parts, only small actors. Right? There are no small parts, only small actors meaning that whatever part you have, it's very important. And with a no small roles mindset, you understand that, you know, whatever part you have, whatever the part they have, you do it to the best you can. And it all comes together to create, you know, a, a, what is a masterpiece. Like when I saw one or two on screen, I just went, oh my gosh, because it's, it's so different. It's so different, so unique at a time when, um, you know, there's really one model, which is, you know, a lot of the American films, to have, sort of have something from the East come to the West and go all around the world. And I've seen it played in Africa, in the Middle East. And just to hear people's reactions, I said, wow, you know, I've been in China 18 years. So, you know, 18 years later, 18 years ago, it was really um, Jackie Chan and Rush Hour, right? That's what most people knew. And now, you know, people are talking about Wandering Earth and they can watch the first one on Netflix. And that was set, made $700 million. And this film could go on to make a billion dollars. And I knew how powerful it was when I was able to share it with my classmates at Cambridge. You know, we did, a, we did a Cambridge premiere where just the faculty, the PhD students all came and uh, they just, they all watched it. And everyone had a new, unique perspective, people on nuclear physics, people on engine development, people on um, artificial intelligence, because now chat GPT, all this, this, this world we're going into now, a lot of these points were touched on in the film. So to see so many PhDs and professors at the university watch the film and then you know, give me feedback, I thought, wow, this is, this is truly extraordinary because you, know, you have test screenings for a film, but I don't think many films have a test screening, whereas at Cambridge, you just got everyone who's going to give you direct feedback. Um, so I think all of that, um, you know, all those points of uh, there are no small parts, only small actors. So having a no small roles mindset making sure that everything you do, even if it's small, do it well. Uh, that would, I'd say, contribute to a success. Um, it's such a different story. You know, it's also based on a novel. I think uh, story writing, script uh, development are so important. And these were things I learned, uh, again, thanks to 8711 and Keanu Reeves, um, you know, point me in the direction of people like Larry Moss. Uh, and people can go check him out. Um, he really has this process of teaching you the importance of preparation, by like how you prepare as an actor, uh, listening and reacting, right? Just not acting, like you're listening to someone and then you're reacting, so it's, it's real. Um, finding emotional truth, right? So you, you, if it's not real, you can just see it on the screen. You're like, oh, what is that? And then, you know, physical work, vocal work, like working on my body, 
um, learn to relax. You know, if you're tense, you can see that. We shot an IMAX camera. An IMAX camera picks up everything, <laughs> like every single detail. If you just looked, you know, you looked one way or you, you thought something, it'd show. Um, having vulnerability, um, you know, I felt there was a lot of that. Um, you know, uh, like specificity. And what I mean by that is like certain acts, certain characters within the film, each had their own nuance and they played it really well. They didn't try and be someone else. Um, huge imagination. I mean, you're pushing the earth through space with engines. There's this imagination there. And then there was this kind of, um, you know, this ensemble of all the actors working together and working together with gratitude. Like everyone was grateful. We would work like early morning or late the next day, early morning, every day. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was an extraordinary experience. And in the film, collaboration plays such a big part. And what's insane is that it collaborates all the different industries of the world, all the different nations of the world, all the different sort of ideologies of the world, like really, really well. And I haven't really seen that happen too much in the West. Like you see a lot of America and another country is the bad guy and only America can fix it or only Britain can fix it. Whereas this was about saving the earth, everyone coming together. And so how important do you think collaboration is in Chinese culture and Chinese storytelling? And is that something that's unique to China? I, I think, I think it's, it's uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's fundamental and fundamental because you, you can't do something by yourself, right? Um, you know, it's not a, it's not a one man army, you know, it's a, it's a collective coming together. And I found myself in a very interesting position because I don't look Chinese, but I speak Chinese. I've been here 18 years. And it comes down to this. And this is what I really appreciate about Chinese culture is that there's knowing something and knowing about something. So what I mean by that is that you know something, and it's like you know it, and there's knowing about. So if someone's asked me about film in China, I know about it because I've been living it. But to like knowing it on an outsider, you don't know it, right? And it's, very, it's a very subtle distinction, but it's so important. And this comes to answering your question. So there's knowing about China, there's knowing China, and there's knowing about it. And being in China, being there, having lived it, um, I found that it was extraordinary that everyone in the film embodied what I felt when I first went to China, that we all do it together to make sure we build something great together. And it, you, I felt it every day on set, it's mass, these just massive sets, right? Massive machines coming. Nothing was CGI. And I'm thinking, wow. And everyone was just so, like, you, they knew they were doing something big. And that was very humbling because I'm in a very interesting position that I've lived in China, but some people would assume that I don't speak Chinese or understand the culture. Yet right now I'm at the University of Cambridge and I'm also at Harvard Business School. So I understand the American mindset. I understand the... British mindset, the Chinese, and grew up in the Middle East. So it's, um, I personally believe that for people to succeed in life, you need to have a better worldview, not one view. And that film for me, it was not about, it's all about China. It's all about bringing together other nations and giving those that don't have a voice a voice. And I'm an example of that. You know, I fought against Wu Jing, um, who's the lead actor in the film, along with Andy Lau, and he's the biggest action star. He's the next Bruce Lee. And they're like, we're giving you the shot. I'm an unknown. It's my third film. <laughs> it's my third film. I went from the first film was $2 million, then to a $20 million film. There's a budget, by the way, not my salary. <laughs> and then $200 million. I wish, I wish, right? <laughs> and then $200 million. And when the film comes out, I open the UK premiere. I do a Cambridge premiere. I'm traveling around the world. I saw it in Egypt, right? People in Egypt, you know, locals in Egypt were talking to me about it. I saw people in the Middle East. I'm seeing people in Lisbon and Portugal when I was with Cambridge. And I just thought, I've never heard that with a Chinese film. You know, this is specifically a Chinese film. It's not like Jackie Chan and Rush Hour 2, which is, you know, Chris Tucker and him all together and they're doing their thing. And it just really humbled me because I think the model now where it's going is that people want international. They want something different. Um, if you look at Netflix now, you see films coming online, like Spanish films, right? Uh, I don't know if you watched the um, heist, right, where they rob, where they 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 um, robbed like the Spanish bank. I mean, these kind of films, the storytelling, 
the cinematography, the coloring, it's amazing, right? And I, and I see that with China because people work so hard, right? Yeah, I know. It's really, it, I loved watching the movie as well. And I love seeing so many more international pictures, getting a lot more screen time over in Australia, America, England. It's just so much better because for me as well, growing up in the Middle East, in China, Hong Kong, like all these different places, like I, I mm-hmm. enjoy different forms of storytelling and I enjoy different types of people and different cultures. And we were so limited in our storytelling for such a long time in the West. And so I'm so happy yeah. that a film like this is doing well. You touched on it with your uh, press tour going to all the different countries, Egypt, Portugal, which city or country out of China uh, best received the film, do you think, and really enjoyed the movie? You know, I, I have to say, because I hadn't been home in England for a long time, it was the UK premiere because the UK premiere for the first time, they opened the film in China on Chinese New Year and the same day they opened it in the UK. So I opened the UK premiere and um, uh, I would literally just come straight from Cambridge, went to London, opened the premiere. My mum was there, everyone close to me, my family. And for them to see this journey of starting from nothing, you know, in China, to 18 years later being up on the screen opening a film. It's a, it's, it's a dream come true. Like it was just a dream come true. And it was so impactful that my classmates from Cambridge wanted to go to the premiere, but there were no tickets. So then they came with this idea, can we do a Cambridge premiere? Can we, you know, show it this their Cambridge? So we spent a month, they, well, they spent a month at Cambridge University organizing it and then just sharing it with my classmates because... Um, one, it comes from the heart, like the feelings of that moment of everything coming together because I left England and America to go to China and to come back 18 years later, a different person. And there were, you know, I wrote some notes down why I have this feeling. So when it was, when I was filming, it was more than just acting. It was more than, um, you know, wow, on the big TV screen. You know, I learned to go beyond myself when I was on the set. I learned um, to recognize and understand different parts of my brain, right? Just to really go to places that I've not been to before, um, to step into the unknown. You know, a lot of the wire work, a lot of the scenes, a lot of imagining I'm in a green screen. Okay, where are we right now? So we're on a space elevator going up and it's how fast is it traveling? And and just to get there, you know, it's not opening your brain, but it's opening your heart. Um, There needs to be a change in your personality because you can't take a Western mindset to an Eastern mindset film, right? Because it's, it's an Eastern mindset strategy that's going to solve the problem, but you can't have the Western mindset. And then, um, you know, um, I thought it was this constant sense of keep, and learning, keep, keep on learning new things. So all of that, you know, um, happened in this project. And I got to really dive deeper into what that was, for example, you know, going beyond myself when I was able to share it in the UK and able to share it with my classmates because they would ask such powerful questions. And if you ask a great question, you can get an answer to yourself, right? Because you start knowing more about yourself. And um, it, was, it, it was really powerful because it was, a, it was a chance for me, especially with that premiere, the UK premiere, the Cambridge one, to, um, it's going to sound ironic, kind of an ironic juxtaposition that, even though I was in the picture, I could finally see outside of the picture. I could really see from outside a mind and heart space and say, mm, wow. And, and with all the feedback from people, honest feedback, it was amazing. And, and I would say it's also the U- for a Chinese film show in the UK, it is the most successful film they've ever had through box office tickets. And I think that is important. But to me, what's really important is the human aspect, that you're opening the doors to culture. You allow people to see, wow, China is an amazing place. Like it gen- the people are amazing. And that's, that's what I really took away from this film. Like I made Wu Jing, the, he was my action hero. He was amazing to me. The director was incredible. He's like, play it like you want. Yes, I'm a bad guy. But he said, you know what? Um, you know, you know, what's one guy's bad guy is another guy's good guy, right? It depends on which side of the fence you're sitting on. And for me in the film, I was against AI. And in particular, that touches a spot for me in my own life because as we're going through education, everyone's talking about artificial intelligence, chat GPT, regulate artificial intelligence, you deep faking. 
and I think everyone's forgotten about natural intelligence, right? To love, to be a human being. And that is what was touched upon in the story, that there was this interesting play between being human and being AI and living on and keeping your memories. And these are, these are questions that we need to ask to answering now in life, right? And to get that conversation going. Yeah. Do you think films are integral to, uh, to really start, like you said, conversations and to start, uh, to start different thinking amongst people? Because sometimes people can get stuck in a mindset and sometimes watching a movie or seeing a piece of art or something storytelling wise can really spark a different idea in you or give you a different perspective that you would have never had. And especially this film coming from China, how important do you think filmmaking is coming from China to kind of bring China to the world in a way? Oh, well, 100%. I think it is it's fundamental because the essence for me of film telling is storytelling, right? That is how we, before grade school, like at Cambridge or Harvard, people told stories and stories that had a lesson that you could take away and say, oh, you know, I could learn from this. And it's very interesting because um, I talked earlier that, um, you know, you've got to have a dream and know what your dream was or is, but don't live in a dreamland. And then lay out your dream very specifically. And for me, it was to um, uh, bring health and life balance to people through love, right? It's a very, but it's a very big uh, vision. Um, but then I kind of break it down. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do it through film. I do it through fitness. Um, and when you're, when you're approaching something so unique, in, it's, it's like a vision like that. And I'm in China and I spend time thinking about it at Cambridge and Harvard. I find one of the ways to connect with people is storytelling and everywhere I've been around the world, you know, I can talk about a case study. I can talk about a book, what to read. But if I show someone a film clip, just a movie clip and say, this is what I was doing, boom, it, it, it blows them away. Whether it's a guy at the airport, a security guard, you know, a cleaner, I speak to all people. And whenever I show them a clip, it's not about saying, look at me, or just show them a film clip of the space elevator we had, or, you know, they're blowing up the moon in the film, right? Um, people just go, wow, I want to know about that story. And through telling the story, you can learn lessons, right? You can learn lessons, um, you know, as the, the, you know, the journey of the hero, the journey of finding yourself. That's why I love Keanu Reeves and Matrix, because it's not about the Matrix. It's about Neo, which is an anagram for one. You're the one in your own story, right? Become the one in your own life. So once you understand the stories and understand maybe how those stories can apply to your life in your own unique way, it could be so powerful. So to answer your question, yes, I think film is tremendously important in bringing cultures together, getting people to explore something different because you don't know what you don't know, right? And it comes back to saying what I said before, there's a difference between knowing and knowing about. Oh, I know all this stuff, yeah, but you haven't been there. You haven't read the books, you haven't seen it, you haven't met the people, so you don't know about it. You just know it. It's different. It's so different. And once you get to that place about knowing about, I feel it makes you a more wholesome person. I mean, whilst I'm here at Cambridge, I have so many Chinese people come up to me and Chinese friends and just talk about the film all around, not just here at Cambridge, Harvard, all around the world. And I said, wow, that starts from a film. And all I do is show people a trailer. But here's the thing. It has to be good. It has to be real. It has to be authentic. It has to be, you know, touched upon the things which I love with Larry Moss, which is it's a film where there's real, um, real preparation gone into it. You can sense the actors aren't just acting, they're listening and reacting in a the moment. There's all the physical work that's gone into it. So for example, me, even though we had a few minute scene, we spent months doing the wire work, jumping up and down, fighting, injuries, but keep going. So, you know, when you put the work in, it shows that it has to be with a good story. I feel like a lot of stuff that's coming out now is just, it's very formulaic. It's very formulaic. It's trying to get as much money from people. And you gotta ask yourself, are you helping educate someone here? You know, for me, that's very important. Um, you know, I'm still defining that. You know, I haven't, got, I haven't got it solid down in terms of a formula, but I do know that people say, wow, you did all this physical work and everything. How do you keep fit? And then I say, well, you could go this direction and do this. And um, film, it creates a connection, right? And I said, like, everyone talks about AI. 
but we need to be talking about natural intelligence. What things a machine can't do. A machine can't love. It can give a great definition of chat GPT, but it can't love, right? It can't have this connection we have right here, yeah. right? No matter how good the deep fake is, because after a while you go, yeah, it's not real because it's not listening and truly reacting, which is great acting because you're not acting. You just listen to the person and then you react. Um, so I think to answer your question, hugely important because film is a cultural element. I mean, that's why America is everywhere around the world through Hollywood films. I can go to a place in like middle of nowhere, Africa, right? Or I go to uh, Egypt, Middle East, India, Vin Diesel, The Rock, right? Hollywood movies. Yeah. Hollywood movies, right? That's the power, of, you know, that engine, that machine. Yeah, for sure. And, and that knowing and knowing about, for me, it makes so much sense when it comes to China as well, because so many people know China. You know, they see the news, they see media things, they hear what people say about China. And they would talk to me like, oh, you lived in China. Uh, you, you can't do this in China. You can't do this. Or, or they'll tell me something about China. I go, that's just so wrong. <laughs> I'm like, China was just a completely different place to what you think you know yeah. about. And so by, that's exactly I mean, uh, right, knowing about. And, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I don't, I've always... Uh, I always tell people never, never mistake, uh, you know, my small business, which at the time I was just a personal trainer for being small minded, right? Never mistake my small business for being small minded, but you know, a big heart and a big mind. And when I was growing up, I dreamed of going to schools like Cambridge. I dreamed of going to Harvard. I actually got rejected by so many places. And I did have one dream when I was a kid and that was to go to China. I had no idea. I was 17 years old. I said, I just want to go there. Saw a map of China. I said, wow, this place is, I don't know, this place is the size of the Middle East, Europe, and America, all combined. They speak one language. I want to go. I, I want to go. People, people thought I was nuts. People you know, thought I was nuts. And even my own family. And I said, no, but I want to go. And 18 years later, I tell people that I wouldn't be the person I am today without China. This is not a about money or fame it's about me as a person like i've learned about the power of humility the power of being humble the power of the when i first went to a teaching university in china for two years you know when you live in a room with eight people and you share a toilet and you have limited amount of electricity and you work seven days a week seven days a week going to school every day and you never complain and you work hard towards a dream even though you're not gonna make a lot of money that wakes you up. That really wakes you up. And I thought back then, as I think now, the people there are amazing. And they allowed me, a guy unknown, because when I went to America, there wasn't any promises. You know, most of the time, it's just loads of no's, loads and loads and loads of no's. And in China, I got to do three films as per my dream, which was, I said, I'm going to add a zero to each budget. First, I said, I'm a $2 million film. Okay, great. It's out of zero, $20 million. And then I'm, I said, I'm at zero, 200 million. And I remember, I, I didn't tell many people because I knew they'd think I was nuts. But I thought, no, I'm just going to stick with my dream. And uh, I got a call one day and it was wandering at it. I said, could you come to set and let's, uh, let's have a talk. And how do they find out about me? TikTok videos. <laughs> TikTok videos. Okay. And this, this, this comes back to a, a point I was touching on before, which is stepping into the unknown and learning to go beyond yourself. Um, I don't particularly like social media because it's used as manipulation. It's, it's not what it says in the word, social media. It's no longer you could use for social, like making funny jokes. I mean, of course that happens. But when I was doing social media, I'd take a video of my friends and we just laugh at it. Every time we saw the video, we just laugh. And so someone told me to get on TikTok and I said, I'm not doing TikTok. You know, I might do a picture on Instagram, but that's about it. You need to get on TikTok. So I said, well, I don't want to do it for making money and just getting fans. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing songs and just, just do anything. I'm working out. And that's how the director found me. He said, I saw your TikTok. And I said, that guy has got to be a mafia. <laughs> and then the funny thing was, we started shooting TikTok videos on set. And you know, obviously, they've got viral. Um, and by viral, I mean anywhere between 10 to 60 million views per video. And that's, uh, is that Douyin in China, yeah? 
Yeah, it's Douyin. So it's two types. You've got TikTok, which operates outside of China, and you have Douyin. Um, I much prefer Douyin because it's more regulated. What do I mean by that? Uh, it's not regulated in the sense they talk about the media. In terms of, it's good content, right? It's not garbage. That's um, you know horrible things or you know whether people want to talk about fake news. It's just nice videos, singing, people having fun. Um, what I thought about, excuse me, is uh, social media. It's it's just social. Um, but that's how the director found me, and I realized in doing something which I said before: step into the unknown and learn to go beyond yourself. Step into the unknown for me was the TikTok videos and go beyond myself. Look, just just make a video singing. I can't sing. I'm tone deaf. <laughs> I don't, but they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the funny thing now is that Cambridge, I apply the same thing. So every time I make a TikTok video, I do it with everyone, even the professors. Everyone says, "Oh, can I get a, can I get in on that TikTok video?" Yeah, okay, come on. <laughs> and sometimes I get, I get like, you know, something. I don't dance. I said, "Don't worry, just do this in the background. I leave the camera work to me because it's all about angles, lighting, movement." So I literally got people in the background doing this, and I just TikTok video. So and that and that comes back to acting, which is you've got to make it your own. You've got to keep learning new things, be willing to take feedback. That I, I would say one of the things I love about China is on set, we just got feedback, right? Direct feedback. That would be we'll shoot a scene, play back. Okay, this, this, this is wrong. Do it again, right? And then, you know, you still make mistakes. Okay, this, this, this is wrong. Do it again. Here it is. Look at it. And through that feedback, it, it kept becoming better. And I think that's a great metaphor for life, which is, you're going to have constant feedback. It's uh, it's like this acronym that I've always loved. Um, learned it from one of my mentors, uh, Tony Robbins, which was uh, a constant commitment to can I, which is C-A-N-I, which means a constant commitment to can I. Can I stands for constant and never-ending improvement. So always be in that place. And then... Um, yeah, very, 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 very powerful lessons because all the stuff I learned in the film transferred into life. It wasn't just like, look at me, I'm acting in a film. It's like, wow, no, this really... And it all came home to me when I sat there in IMAX and just watching the scenes. Because I kept thinking, how are we going to put all these 20,000 people into a film? You know, I'd seen stuff where it's just green screens and you use some CGI. I said, no, no, we're going we're gonna to have people. We're going to take over the whole airport. Machines are coming in and the big IMAX cameras. And I'm thinking, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So no small roles, only small actors. Just do your job and see what happens. And uh, a question uh, to, to wrap up the interview here is a more personal question for me. And I think it, mm. it ties well to Wandering Earth 2 because Wandering Earth 2, everyone involved is focusing on what you said, constantly improving themselves, right? Constantly improving the world, mm. improving themselves, trying to make a contribution. Uh, I've mm -hmm. seen everything you've done with personal training, with your businesses, with the films, now studying at Cambridge, Harvard. How do you balance it all together from being in a huge blockbuster film, studying, and also doing your own business work? Mm -hmm. So it's two, it's, it's two parts, actually. And um, if people are interested to go deeper, they can check out Instagram. We can give some links to your, to your talk. So um, uh, first of all, it's a few things, and I'm going to break it down. Even though I do a lot, I never confuse uh, activity for accomplishment, right? You're doing, 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 but you're doing nothing. Oh, I confuse my activity for accomplishment. No, I know exactly what it is I want. What's the result I want? Why I'm doing it? Like, why am I doing this? And then a massive action plan. So, for example, why am I simultaneously studying at Cambridge and Harvard? Which means, you know, this first past interview, part of the interview we're doing here at Cambridge. Next week, we're going to do it at Harvard. Yes, that means I need to get on the plane and fly to another place. People ask, how do you do that? So I get on the plane and I fly. <laughs> what, what they really said, they really said is like, how do you balance it? Well, I know what my result is. I know that one thing no one can take away from you, okay, is your education, okay? And an educated person means you, you're able to develop self-leadership, self-direction, you know where you're going, you understand where you're going, and it's not just about motivation. Yes, 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 it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. No. You need systems, you need teaching, you need to teach your brain how to think. So um, my result was to get educated. Why? Because I know the power of education. Every great thing I've ever seen, whether it's been built as a building or an idea turned into something amazing, 
It's always started with a great education. And then from that, knowing my result, knowing my purpose, then I just build out all the plans. Okay, this is how I'm going to Harvard. This is all the work I'm going to do that be that, that kind of builds and feeds into that. So film, yes. My uh, health business, yes. You know, going out drinking, doing bad things, no. So I don't do that, right? Because I'm very clear on my result, why I want to do it, and then the massive action plans. This is actually a system created by Tony Robbins called RPM, Result, Purpose, Massive Action Plan. And what he says is that your results focused, purpose-driven with massive action plans. Results focused, purpose-driven and massive action plans. That's one framework. Then on top of that, I have four... Um, four principles I live with. It's, uh, it's called the four agreements. And these will change your life, whether you're on film, whether you're in your life, with your friends or yourself. And it goes like this. First, keep your word. Right? Keep your word. Keep your word to yourself. Keep your word to other people. In the context of you and I, I made a promise to you that I was going to do this. No matter what, it was raining, whatever's going to keep my word. Second, don't make assumptions. Right? Don't assume anything. Third, never take it personally. And fourth, always do your best. If you live a life where you keep your word, you don't make assumptions, you don't take it personally, you do your best, it's great. But I found when people are doing so much, they're confusing activity for accomplishment, they're also doing the opposite of, you know, sorry, the opposite of what I just told you. They're not keeping their word, they're assuming all these kind of things, right? They're taking it personally and not doing their best. And then they wonder why they got problems. They wonder why it's not working. Dude. It's very simple. Keep your word. Don't make assumptions. Don't take it personally. Always do your best. Now, with your best, say, okay, this is the result I want. This is why I'm doing it, and these are the plans. Right? And it comes back to a philosophy that I learned in China, which is, you know, when you flow with nature, nature in the setting of this conversation we're having now is nature is you. Just be you and do you. You're in line, in tune with nature, and you're rich. Right? And I'm not talking about money rich. I'm talking about rich in you. But if you align it with people's you know, judgments, opinions, then you're poor. And I found that when I followed the system I was talking about, I, I build into three things that money can never buy, which is money can never buy time, it can never buy health, and it can never buy love. And I know I'm maximizing my time doing what I love. I'm feeling healthy and great. And I just have so much love in doing it. But I don't feel like I'm doing I'm just you know, really being. So I hope that answers your question because it's a very, it's a very, um, you know, when, when a lot of people look at what the, I do, they say, oh my gosh, how does it do all that? But you've got to have a system, a system, know your result, have a purpose, have all the plans laid out, and then hold yourself accountable to keep your word, don't make assumptions, don't take it personally, and then um, always do your best. And that's how I get it done. Wow. That's incredible. And um just quickly, what's a what's a daily schedule like for you? Because I, I wonder how how you actually do fit all these different things into one day. So um, I I measure by the week, right, rather than the days. So usually by the week, I set my goals for the week that I want to achieve, and I block time for Harvard, I block time for Cambridge, and I block time for my work. Uh, but always when I get up in the morning, I um, I'll, I'll pull up my schedule here so I can I can just tell you directly. <laughs> Okay, so um, so what I do is, let me pull it up here. So um, when I wake up in the morning, uh, the first thing I do is I have, it's actually, I have an application, iPhone application, and then I do a bunch of core exercises. I do this thing called Qigong and prostrations, and I finish up with a meditation. It's actually a circuit, little circuit I do myself, but I create it as an educational platform for people. Um, if I'm traveling, Sleep is, it's, uh, you know, maybe I'm waking up in Egypt at, you know, whatever time, uh, five o'clock in the morning, but that's still like nighttime in America. So you get thrown off a little bit. I try to sleep on the planes, but when I get somewhere, I'd like to get up by 4.30, 5 o'clock and then start with maybe I'll run, maybe I'll do some walking and then I'll start doing my exercises. And then in terms of food, I only eat organic foods. Uh, I, don't really have chocolates, burgers. It's basically vegetables, chicken, and fish. I avoid a lot of processed foods. Sometimes that's hard when you're traveling to a country and they don't have the juices and healthy food. So I got to say, okay, well, at least make sure I'm drinking a lot of water. Um, uh, I try to eliminate toxins. So that's why I don't drink. I don't smoke. 
uh, always exercising. So one of my students, he has the world record for the plank. Okay. Um, you know, I've seen him go from like an hour plank to eight hours and now at 63 years old, having the world record. And when you see someone train like that, you know, you're, like I said, in the acting, you're going beyond yourself. You're going beyond what you think. And when I trained with him, one day, it's, uh, throughout the day, he did 6,000 push-ups. So what I thought was 60 push-ups a lot, 6,000. Keep, keep up, Tom. How old are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 30. Yeah, well, I'm 63. Keep up. You know, once you have that as a role model, you say, okay, well, you know what? I could put on a Netflix video or listen to a lecture and see if I can do a thousand push-ups, right? Or 2000. Because sometimes when I'm traveling, I can't get to the gym, but it is a must. Like, uh, it is a must to exercise. I do try to make sure I get a lot of sleep. Um, I'd love to ideally get seven to eight hours. Sometimes I don't. So when we were on this film schedule, um, there wasn't much sleep. Um, so then I do need to manage stress. So anything that's not serving me, cut it out. Um, you are you are the five people you surround yourself with. So be very careful when you surround yourself with. Are you, are, you get, are you with people that lift you up or put you down? So that I manage very carefully. Um, you know, I take some supplements. You know, sometimes if I'm traveling, I'll take a protein powder um, because, you know, for example, when I, I was out in the desert in Dubai and Egypt, there's no way you're going to get like some fruit or something. So I'll keep a banana, some water and protein powder. I just have the protein powder, the water, banana, and then I'm set. And I know I can go for the next few hours. Um, and then, you know, I always recommend people you go to your doctor and get a checkup, right? Do that regularly every few years, just because there are things you might not know about yourself, right? Just make sure your organs are in check. Um, but I'm, I'm very uh, good at self-management. Like anytime I feel too much stress, I say, okay, I just need to chill right now, right? Maybe chill is go for a walk, call a friend. Um, and it comes back to what Shakespeare said, right? Know thyself. To thine own self be true. Don't listen to what everyone else is telling you. Right? Take all the learnings and then apply it to yourself. Does this work for me? Um, you know, I just drink, I drink a lot of water. That's the key. You know, most people don't hydrate enough. Um, I work with some great bodybuilders, great trainers. For me, in action performance, whether it's stuntman work, it's not good to be too too big and bulky, right? Your body can't move. So I do a lot of yoga in the morning or qigong. And if people are interested, it's all in my app. It's a free app, by the way, called Tony's 8 Minutes. Um, but that's my routine. I, I get up early. I'd like to go to bed by 10 or 9, but sometimes that's not the case. If I have an assignment, as I did uh, two days ago here at Cambridge, <laughs> that kept me up late. But I think it's good to work your brain. I think most people, when they leave school, you know, they spend all, if it's high school, university, spend all that time memorizing and learning. And they just say, okay, forget it. I'm not going to do that anymore. But life is constant and never ending improvement. And that improvement comes through education. You're not going to be able to make an amazing film like Avatar with no edu education. If you look at someone like James Cameron, he spent whatever he could to learn, to learn about lighting, to learn about coloration, to learn about script writing. And now he makes just epics epic films right and that was you know his work for me amy I mean, if we're looking at success leaves clues he is for me the top the top in terms you know, i love christopher nolan i love um james cameron and particularly when avatar 2 came out uh wandering earth 2 came out so wandering earth 2 uh i think avatar made 200 million in china and wandering earth 2 quickly overtook avatar so it was a talking point in china um and one of the things they said about Wandering Earth 1 is it was the biggest blockbuster no one ever knew about. <laughs> it was the biggest blockbuster that no one ever knew about. And so when I heard that, I said, well, for this one, I'm going to do everything I can that people can hear about it. Because so many people asked me about China. I said, well, if you want to know something but don't know about it, or at least get to that point, go watch this film. Yeah. Go watch this film with an open mind and don't say, oh, my gosh, it's Russian and Chinese. This No. Just open your mind and heart and see what happens. Right? Too much of too much uh, the world today is people don't open their mind. They don't open their heart. They live in someone else's reality, live in all these different things that are not, not them, right? And you know, once you open up, you know, like I said, I think if you open yourself to the world, the universe and the world open itself to you. Right? But if you're closed, then it's closed to you. Um, and this is the, this is very 
philosophical, but very much what China is like living these philosophies. Um, especially because when you were saying earlier, that is it good or bad? Is this good or bad? And they have a philosophy in China that um, what is a good man, but a bad man's teacher? And what is a bad man, but a good man's job? So, just, you know, they both support each other, right? Yin and yang, black and white. I just realized I'm wearing black and white here. So. <laughs> Yeah, but that was, that was a great interview, man. I really yeah. thought fantastic. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining me today. It was a real honor to speak to you. Like, I know you're so busy and seeing all the crazy things you've done, how successful this movie was, and for you to come onto my platform, onto this podcast, and do a discussion was just incredible. And at Cambridge as well. No, it's get better. <laughs> no it's uh, well, you know, I think you're amazing. Uh, everything you're doing, there's, there's so much power in you because um, to me, uh, when I listen to you talk and when I listen to you speak, um, you're salt of the earth. You know what I mean? Like you're real, um, you know, salt of the earth. Like, um, you know, you're bringing out the best in others. And um, I think that is so important in the world today that we learn to help bring out the best in each other just to make everywhere a better place right and the way you talk the the authenticity that you come at the way come at it with different from different perspectives for me it's like salt the earth and i'm sure i've had a feeling you like the film dune am i right yeah yeah you do yeah, yeah. So I, I like it as well i mean we see we're, we're already we like the same things i mean that is just an amazing film but um you know salt the earth is um, you know, someone who's highly valued and essential to the world. I think people like you that are going out there, analyzing, looking at things, salt the earth. It's actually a biblical term as well. And uh, it's funny you talk about, we talk about Dune, but sometimes I feel that like the salt's being taken out of many things, right? Like the salt in the movies, that kind of, you know, where's that, that flavor, right? Um, yeah. Or it's just not there so like oh right um and when you go back to some of the old greats you're like wow that film had salt that yep. really had something to it 